Hi, this is Dorm at the beginning of this episode. I just want to apologize. I don't know why I sound like I'm in a hallway somewhere else in this episode, but I do. And I'm just letting you know now. Good thing it's a Liddy episode. Okay, enjoy the show. Bye. Click to learn more. The show that sounds like clickbait. But it's actually two dorks. Norm. <laughs> yeah. You didn't say that you're Liddy this time. Usually we go like, I'm Liddy, I'm Dorm. Oh. And you just went, Dorm. All right, <laughs> I sure. Did. Hot I start. Did. I like it. What's up? <laughs> you know, it's funny because I did have this thought that it would be hilarious if we each wrote one another an episode. <laughs> Explain. Like if I wrote one for you, but it but you didn't read it first. Like, oh, like, like, like we hand it to each other before oh we God. do podcast and we record to that day That's actually pretty fun. and it's you're, you know, you choose something for me and I choose something for you. And each of us is going to struggle through whatever it is because more like Maybe most like likely 50 or 100 or something. Yeah. Like some it. kind of like some kind of anniversary yeah, so. one, yeah. I think. Yeah, for sure. But I thought of that. I thought about that today. That's um, pretty good. Anywho. Yeah. Hi, Dorm. Hi. Liddy. I'm Liddy. <laughs> Hi, Liddy. And this I'm is Dorm. and this is the podcast that we do together. Can you we, believe it? We do do this podcast. We do do this podcast, ah, and it's called do do. Click to Learn More. It and is. today, people are already listening. You're like gonna learn more. Oh, I see. I said, come. Oh, just let me do my thing. Sorry. You're so gonna does. you're gonna learn more, and you don't even have to click. I mean, you will later to like edit That's and true. stuff. I mean, but you have to click record. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's, it's, okay. <laughs> Mine's click to <laughs> learn more. Click, nope. Nope. <laughs> Try to work shop that one. Well, this is funny because I'm hyperactive right now. You'd never know it looking at me because I'm like a slug. But I... You started <laughs> the word with S-L-U and didn't think <laughs> slug was the way you were going. But we're talking about caffeine today. Gotcha. And I pretty much live solely on caffeine nowadays, I mm. think. Uh, so the sources for today are going to be bbc.com, Wikipedia, of course, How Stuff Works, because I love that website, yes. Medical News Today, Mental Floss, and Mayo Clinic. So a little bit of like pop culture-y type pop science and a little bit of like actual science. So gotcha. we're going to blend a little of the two. So caffeine is the socially acceptable psychoactive drug. Huh. Right. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I, I, yeah, I'll give it to you. Right, because it's a stimulant. Right. Like, it is it is a drug. It is classified as a drug. So, it's a central nervous system stimulant of the methyl exanthine class. So, methyl xanthine class. Stimulants, which are also referred to as psychostimulants or colloquial, colloquially as uppers, mm. as we know them in the, what, like, Drug community? We? No. We in the drug community? Yes. Yeah, I included myself in there Didn't as if I was, was part of that. Um, is an overarching term that covers many drugs, including those that increase activity of the central nervous system and the body. So it's the world's most widely consumed psychoactive drug. A psychoactive drug, psychopharmaceutical or psychotropic drug, is a chemical substance that changes brain function and results in alterations in perception, mood, consciousness, cognition, or behavior. Is so It's a psychotropic drug. Drug, just what you take on the beach. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it tastes like coconuts. Yeah. <laughs> you can only take it. Cocaine nut. You can, you can, oh, you can only you. you can only listen to it if uh, James Buffett's playing uh, in the background. Jimmy Buffett. Like yeah. It. So it's it's strange because caffeine has the same though in a much smaller dose effect on your body as like heroin and cocaine. Oh, so good. like on a much smaller smaller scale, sure, it will affect your body in this in. The same way that BB guns are a much smaller scale version of, of, of an actual of gun. Of an AR, yeah. Of an AR, sure. Unlike many other psychoactive substances, it's legal and unregulated in nearly all parts of the world. There are several known mechanisms of action to explain the effects of caffeine. Um, the most prominent is that it reversibly blocks the action of... So I looked this up and I'm now, of course, I'm not going to... I'm on the spot adenosine um on its receptor on its receptor in your brain which means that uh consequently it pre prevents the onset of drowsiness induced by this actual thing so gotcha. um so adenosine makes you sleepy or okay. it like it it sh like it starts to slow you down as you're throughout the day like your body is like 
firing neurons like crazy. Like your brain's like, hey, we're getting tired. We need to probably start winding down soon. Yeah. That's what adenosine does. It says, okay, we're getting tired. We need to start relaxing soon, right? Um, caffeine stimulates certain portions of the automatic nervous system. And it kind of gets in the way because it's similarly shaped to mm. adenosine. So it kind of like wiggles its way in. And it's like, okay. and it's like, whoops, you can't have any more adenosine because I'm here now. And where normally it would slow everything down, yeah. caffeine's going to speed it up. So gotcha. your central nervous system is just like, okay, well, I guess we got to do this and makes you hyperactive for however much time. That sounds very... <laughs> Not dangerous at all. <laughs> right. Uh, so caffeine is found in the seeds, nuts, or leaves of a number of plants native to Africa, East Asia, and South America, and helps to protect them against predator insects and to prevent germination of nearby seeds. Uh, beverages containing caffeine are ingested to relieve or prevent drowsiness and to improve performance. So we'll talk about this a little later, but caffeine has actually been proven to be a performance-enhancing drug mm. in a way. And because of that, the NCAA allows so much of it. Like oh, really? in your urine, but you can be like fined for going over a certain limit. That's yeah, right. So if they find too much of it in your urine, you can be fined in the same way that you would be fined for taking steroids. Like mm. it's a really strange thing to think of. Like if you have too many Mountain Dews, like right. is this going to affect you? Well, but I if it's a limit where you would digest enough caffeine if you were mm -hmm. just normally taking it. And yeah. Like so more often than not, what that's going to be is in a tablet form right. or it's going to be in a powdered form. You're not going to be able to get that much of it just through, from drinking a pot. Yeah, through, through some kind of beverage. Um, to make these drinks, caffeine is extracted by steeping the plant product in water, which is a process called infusion. Caffeine containing drinks such as coffee, tea, and cola are very popular. As of 2014, 85% of American adults consume some form of caffeine daily, consuming about 164 milligrams on average. Mm -hmm. So they say around 400 milligrams is considered like the safe cutoff point where you should kind of stop, Yeah. Um, which is going to be up like five cups of coffee. So that's and, and really, if you think about it, if you've ever done that, if you've mm -hmm. ever been that at that at that point yeah. where you've had five cups of coffee, you don't really want any more because your body is like getting jittery and you're right. getting the shakes and stuff. And you, you're kind of like, that's a pretty good limit, I think. You can die. You can overdose. Oh, people, yeah. Right? We'll talk about that. Yeah. I, well, I know we are. <laughs> I just wanted to. Make sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Which is scary because like it's really funny because I'll tell my mom that I have these energy drinks. Right. And I'm like, but, you yeah, know, but they're fine because they're like no sugar and no calories. And she's like, yeah, but your heart's going to pop. And I'm like, how do you think this works? <laughs> how do you think hearts work? <laughs> yeah. How do you think hearts are supposed to work? Um, um, a quick fun aside, uh, uh -huh. after we just talked about death, yeah. um, originally coffee was a food, not a drink. So early East African tribes mixed the coffee berries, which is the unholed bean, which is called a coffee cherry mm. in, uh, with animal fat it's and they, drag name. <laughs> coffee cherry. Yeah. And they formed energy balls, which are like some kind of like little. I'm sorry. Yeah. So have you ever heard of these where people will take like oats and peanut butter and like raw peanuts and stuff like that and they'll like mash them up into a ball and it's like a no-bake ball and they're just like energy balls i've I never heard the term I, energy balls in my life i think they jokingly reference it on always sunny but i can't remember they, but they had like the pills in it or, or whatever and it was like they I were they were putting this. them to sleep i think it might have been during the dancing episode because they, <laughs> the, they the all night dancing yeah because okay. they said something about how they oh, that does kind of ring a bell that, they, like that's what charlie was bringing them yeah they have to stay day. up all night but he ended up giving them ones that made them sleepy <laughs> instead <laughs> yeah um and so it's kind of think of it like a more primitive power bar, right? Gotcha. So sure. it's kind of like a, it's kind of like that, except that do it, you know, DIY. Right. Uh, coffee, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Coffee also grew on the Arabian Peninsula, and it was there that the first of it first developed into a hot drink. Uh, sometime around like a thousand AD. So okay. coffee, coffee. That's when thousand it, Anthony Davis. Yeah, thousand Anthony Davises. Can you believe it? <laughs> the wall, the wall, Washington State. <laughs> By the 13th century, Muslims were drinking coffee fervently, fervently, hmm. fervently, fervently. Uh, coffee's grown only in one U.S. state. Do you want to guess Can which I guess? one? Yeah. Uh, which one would be the only one? <laughs> Arizona. Hawaii. Oh. It's got the tropical kind of. Kinda... I was trying to think like, because you said. Like, You're thinking Arabian, like hot. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Dry, humid places. Yeah. Um, it's. Or, sorry. Dry, non-humid places. <laughs> it's famed Kona coffee grown on Hawaii's volcanic mountains. Oh, right. Is highly desired. Yeah. So 
I know we're supposed to have like maybe like 400 milligrams of caffeine a day to stay in the safe range. Uh Um, A a cup of coffee is about 80 to 175, depending on what bean is used and how it's prepared. So if it's drip, percolation or espresso, all of those are different things. All of, we were smiling. Is yeah, it because you thought of percolation? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Just the term percolation makes me laugh. <laughs> just, like, <laughs> listen, early 2000s hip hop had a very big effect on me. Mm-hmm, I could tell. Just, yeah. Know, like people, you know, like percolate. <laughs> that's it. Isn't that, that's a, we get it to percolating. Yeah. Yeah. And I never like, knew what that meant. And mm-hmm. then I heard that in reference to coffee once and I was like, oh. What does it mean in reference to coffee? So it's just the water moving down through the beans. Like, so if it's like powdered and it's, it's, it's your basic coffee. Gotcha. As far as I know, like, I mean, that's also drip coffee. So I don't know, like, like, I don't know if it's the process of how it moves down, but I know it's supposed to be like a little movement, like, which is like, get it percolate, I guess. I don't know. I did a a little dance. A weird shoulder. (laughs) Do you not call it weird? They can't see me make it sound like it was cool. (laughs) Oh, very cool. Thank you. Steve. Steve Ballmer at the Microsoft conference esque. Oh come on, that already sounds lame. That sounds like an old white dude doing a little shimmy. It is exactly that. Oh man. (laughs) Oh come on. (laughs) However, pure powdered caffeine, which is available as a dietary supplement, what? And it's unregulated, by the way. So it's like, guess what? Here you go. Um, It can be lethal in tablespoon sized amounts. That's not a lot. Right? And people are taking this as, like, thinking it's, like, going to, like, kickstart your metabolism or whatever. It's going to do something for you. And so you're going to take a spoonful of it because you're thinking the more the merrier, right? Nope. Just thought of it's someone gonna doing... It's going to kill you. I saw someone doing, like, the spoonful of cinnamon thing, but with caffeine. Oh, and, just, and they just, like, just, just, like, lose their minds. Oh, my gosh. Did you see... Sorry for the very quick aside. Did you see the Twitter video that was, like, uh, spoilers, I guess, for <laughs> Infinity War? <laughs> Um, that was like the woman doing the uh, cinnamon challenge and her like coughing it all back up and it being dust. No. And it was just like pregnant women when Thanos snapped. Oh <laughs> no. Well, would that be, f- yeah, Infinity War. Yeah. yeah. Not in game. Sorry. Yeah. I was like, I was like, what does this have to do with in game? Oh, that's terrible that's though. So good. Oh, I laughed very hard at that joke. Oh, that's upsetting. That's like Boom made a joke last night. In chat, or he. Mm-hmm. By the way, hi Boomo. If you're listening to this, I was you're, say, wait to instantly date when we record. This. You're a terrible person. Uh, he said anything's a vibrator if you have Parkinson's. <laughs> Don't laugh at that. I'm not. Yes, you are. He said that last night, and it was terrible. So oh. <laughs> I'm gonna put him on. But yeah, we're recording this on the 14th. I don't so. know if we've ever had to bleep a joke before. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to bleep the joke. <laughs> it's Bumo's fault. Blame him. He'll know what it is. He know, he'll know what he's I done. Get cut. He'll know what he's done. Um, it's possible to develop a mild form of drug dependence on caffeine, and one can even build up a slight tolerance to it. So I just tweeted out the other day. I was like, caffeine doesn't work on me anymore. And also me when I have one ALA and I just start bouncing off the oh, walls. Because yeah, that's like, that's legit. Because I am I have like a cup of coffee and I'm like, nah, this doesn't affect me. And then I'll have like an ALA and goodbye all productivity for the next like hour and a half because i'm gonna be hyper as, as heck have you had the orange cream l8 i have thoughts eh yeah it's i, I was like good. i was I like it's, it's i'm glad i tried it yeah i would drink it again oh i have some berry dr pepper in my trunk that i need you to try oh okay okay <laughs> it just sounds like i just hi, smuggled I'm, it hi i'm dr berry pepper nice I'm, to meet you I'm, i've been I'm, in liddy's trunk I'm, for i've days. been in the trunk for a while don't worry about it uh, so to summarize, since we've <laughs> since we bounced all over the map a little bit, yeah. caffeine is a central nervous system sim- stimulant that reduces fatigue and drowsiness. And at normal doses, it has variable effects on learning and memory, but it generally improves reaction time, wakefulness, concentration, and motor coordination. The amount of caffeine needed to produce these effects varies from person to person, depending on body size and degree of tolerance, just like alcohol. The desired effects arise approximately one hour after consumption, and the desired effects of a moderate dose usually subside after about three or four hours depending on how it was like how it was uh, I almost said created how it was made Mm. what is the word I'm thinking of when you like make a meal for someone prepared prepared Depending on how it's prepared. Thank yeah. you. I knew it started with a P, but it could or not. fixed here in the zone. Yeah, fixed. Um, so depending on how it's prepared, it can last as long as six hours in your system. So that means if you're taking, if you're drinking a cup of coffee at like 4 p.m. thinking like, oh, I just got to get through this last hour. You're going to be up until probably close to 10 p.m. just from the caffeine Whoa. off of that one. Well, I mean, it doesn't sound like a big deal until you have like 
you know, three cups of coffee at 5 p.m. Sure. And then you're like jittering out of your skin. Three in the morning and you can't sleep. Yeah, which is what I do. Um, and then you wake up and you're miserable because you're dehydrated and because your body is all jittery. And so you start the cycle all over again. Mm. So in a weird way, it's kind of like a branch of like how alcohol treats your body. Like gotcha. you have to have withdrawals from it. You get dehydrated from it for a short amount of time. You have euphoria from it until you have an eventual crash. So it's kind of this weird parallel with alcohol. But that's not in my notes. I just thought, you know, it's just a <laughs> weird. That was an ad lib. That's just a weird thing I noticed that happened. Um, so this is completely from mental floss. Um, as your neurons fire throughout the day, a neurochemical called adenosine um, builds up in your body. The nervous system uses special receptors to monitor your body's levels of this uh, neurochemical. And as the day wears on, more and more of that passes through those receptors and it makes you sleepy. And it's one of the reasons that nighttime is when you get tired. So this is kind of how we people can work third shift and then like sleep all day and wake up at night it's just like it just resets itself based on based on when you're awake and how much effort you're putting out throughout the day i guess um now this is from how stuff works so since adenosine secretion reflects brain cell activity rising concentrations of this chemical may be how the organ gauges that it's been burning up its energy reserves and needs to shut down for a while so that's how a certain amount of time like your brain sees how much of that's going on and goes okay that's way too much we gotta relax like we gotta sleep we gotta we gotta start over so as it's created in the brain, it binds to its own certain receptors and the binding causes drowsiness by slowing down nerve cell activity in the brain. This also causes blood vessels to dilate, most likely to let oxygen into the organ during sleep. But we don't really know. Like the science of sleep is really weird because we don't really know like why we do it. Like we just know that eventually our brain is like, hey, we need to rest. But we don't really know why. Um, and we don't know why we dream really either like That's it's like weird. our brain downloading right it was like, isn't that weird though it's like your brain's reliving all of these things that it saw or heard or whatever throughout the last you know day and a half sometimes longer and we don't know why like we don't know why your brain needs to process that speaking of which i just remember this mm -hmm. last night i hadn't dreamed in like two months last yeah. night i had a dream that you were I, like you just came up in conversation i guess because i watched your stream last night uh-huh and you were married to <laughs> former New York Mets pitcher Matt Harvey. Which oh, because Harvey. Was Harvey but yeah. That was just a strange detail. <laughs> I meant to tell you this morning and forgot. But I remember. That's really great. I like that a lot. I don't know why. It's just it was the only detail from the dream I remember. It was just like, oh, yeah, she's married to Matt Harvey. She's, oh, because it's that you, I remember. me and Harvey go hand in hand. I yeah, got it. It's weird. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, that's fine. That's funny. Um, to a nerve cell, caffeine looks like. I keep saying it weird every time. It's A-D-E-N-O-S-I-N-E. -E, so adenosine. But I'm going to keep saying it weird. Um, adenosine. Adenosine. Caffeine binds to the adenosine receptor. <laughs> Dino, Dino sour. Um, however, caffeine doesn't slow down the cell's activity. As a result, the cell can no longer identify it because caffeine's taken up all the receptors that it would normally bind to. So there's a certain amount of places for it to bind. Caffeine takes up all those spots. You can't be sleepy anymore. It's like, now it's like brain lift. musical chairs. Yeah, I thought of it in the same way as like um, a roller coaster. So where normally like adenosine would be getting on, all the caffeine gets on instead. Ah. And there's no more room for adenosine. So it's like you're on this, these loop-de-loops and everything's great. And then when they stop and they get off and adenosine gets back on, now you're tired. So that's what a crash is. Gotcha. So once the caffeine runs its course through your body, all of these get... That doesn't make more sense than musical <laughs> chairs now that I think about it. But... All, the adenosine gets all... They get back into the spaces they're supposed to be in, which is why you can have a crash after caffeine. Right. And it doesn't help, too, that a lot of people, when they have their coffee, they have, like, really sugary coffees or, like, mm -hmm. have, like, a lot of, like, syrups and stuff like that in it, which adds on to the fact that when you crash, you're going to crash hard because your body is also processing that sugar. Right. And when you're hit with the adrenaline from the caffeine, your liver already releases more sugar. And so it's like double the amount of sugar that's happening in your body. And so your blood sugar levels just go plummet to the ground and then you're just exhausted afterwards. So don't you don't need all those fruity coffees. Just drink your coffee black like a grown up. Um, no, nah, drink coffee out of the fucking. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm just kidding. I I like caramel lattes, really, so I can't really I judge you. Lot, like, I don't drink coffee a lot, but <laughs> when I do, I put whatever I want. Okay. What do you know? How do you take your coffee? Uh, in a cup. Okay. <laughs> no, uh, if I'm making it at home, just like a lot of creamer and sugar. 
Like, mm-hmm. I like it blonde, basically. Yeah. Uh, but if I'm going to, like, Starbucks or something, I just usually get, like, a... a a chocolate latte. What are they called? Mocha, mocha? lattes? That's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. yeah. I normally get, get a caramel latte, but instead of the caramel syrup, I get the caramel dri- extra caramel drizzle. Mm. Because I'm a caramel guy. Really? Oh, that's my like main thing. Stuff. That's my main thing. But you, but here's the thing, dear listener. You have to get it without the syrup. Because the syrup kind of tastes like sugar. Or kind of tastes like caramel, which is sugar. But doesn't really. But the but the stuff they put on the top, mm. that's where the money is. So you got to ask for that. And just where say, you, you got to say, I want extra drizzle, not extra syrup. And then they'll give you extra drizzle. And then it will just taste like you're just drinking hot milk and caramel. And it's delicious. Nice. See, so yeah, my mom's the, a big caramel person. She, she's a fan of the caramel frappe. Oh, yes. But I just, she tried. She was like, this is so good. And I was like, oh. Really? Like, no. That's the first. I'm not a picky eater at all. And that was one of the first things I've ever been like, this is gross. How do you like this? Really? So yeah. do you do that? Like, I guess you you don't really have access to a lot of like caramel based candies and stuff no, like like a Werther's original yeah, yeah like, like or like a soft like a soft caramel or but I whatever like, like um turtles like chocolate and caramel is a good com- co- well, see, combination but car- I really like chocolate. yeah i was gonna say chocolate's kind of carrying your thing there yeah. right and to keep this on topic chocolate has caffeine in it hey. so hey <laughs> as if we yeah as if i'm trying to reach some kind of like i have to stick to the yeah, to stick to the story thing. yeah <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, caffeine also causes the brain's blood vessels to constrict because it blocks adenosine's ability to open them up. This effect is why some headache medicines like anison contain caffeine because constricting blood vessels in the brain h- can help stop a vascular headache. Mm. So you actually want to constrict it a little bit because it'll help with headaches. What the, when huh. you get, like, I guess it's... Brain like, science is weird. <laughs> yeah. So brains are super strange, dude. Like, if you have a fever... Your brain will literally try to boil itself yep. to kill it instead of saving you. It's like yeah. we have to just kill the disease or yeah, we, we have to kill the virus. The yeah, we have to kill the virus in whatever way we can. Like it's just salt and burn. Like get rid of all of it. It's like we need the legs to move and the arms to move and everything else and the heart to beat. And it's like, nah, 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 you're good. Don't worry about it. Excuse me? brain caffeine's effect on the brain causes increased neuron firing and the pituitary gland senses this activity and thinks some sort of emergency must be occurring so it releases hormones that tell the adrenal glands to produce adrenaline Mm. so something's going on (laughs) a lot of medicines and and things like this when you hear them explained they all sound like a thing you shouldn't want to do to your body yeah like Oh, hey, I'm going to tell my brain it has an emergency so yeah. I get fired up. Yeah, but I'm going to throw my... Like a waste of that response. Yeah, I'm going to throw my pituitary gland into a fight or flight response, right. thinking that we are in danger in some way because I want some coffee. Because yeah, I want to wake up. Yeah, because I need to wake up a little more. Yeah, isn't that wild to think that like your body gets so confused? It's like, what do we do? We got to we gotta do something. Let's throw some adrenaline at it. What do we do? And meanwhile, right. you're at your desk like typing your morning emails. You oh, know God. what I mean? Like, yeah. that's it's such a mundane thing export this file better yeah it, it's such a mundane thing that you're trying to wake up to do while meanwhile your body's like freaking out thinking something's wrong yeah that's so weird to me caffeine increases dopamine levels in the same way that heroin and cocaine do by slowing down the rate of dopamine reabsorption its effect is much weaker than heroin's like we talked about but the mechanism's the same and researchers suspect that this dopamine connection is what contributes to caffeine addiction so mm-hmm. because you get that little bit of a high your body kind of starts to crave that. Sure. Like, you know, people. there are people that ha- cannot start their day without coffee. Don't they have to. Until I've had my coffee. <laughs> you just have to. And that's that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so to summarize that section, caffeine blocks in, um, and denosine. I see, I told you I was going to say it wrong every time. Adenosine reception so you feel alert and injects adrenaline into the system to give you a boost. And it manipulates dopamine production to make you feel good. So it stops the bad stuff. Mm-hmm. It increases the good stuff it's not bad stuff right it's not even bad it stuff it's just sleepy stuff. it's the normal stuff right it's your brain it's, saying, it's your yeah it's your brain saying hey i'm tired we should get more rest and yeah. you're going nah 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 you'll be fine let's just block that Power thing through. yeah let's block the protective thing you're trying to do for me right. and instead go beyond what you're overclock you essentially and yeah. do more than what you're supposed overclock. to do <laughs> oh fun fact the half-life of caffeine in your body is about six hours hmm. so the reception that you have, like adenosine re- reception, which is affected by caffeine, is important, which is important to your sleep, um, and especially to deep sleep, like the REM cycle stuff. You may be able to fall asleep after the big cup of coffee that you have in the afternoon, but your body is most likely not getting deep sleep benefits. Mm. So even though you are asleep, 
your brain is still going. Like there, your body is probably still trying to function with all that caffeine in your system. Sure. So that's how you can fall asleep in a normal time, but still have caffeine in your system and wake up feeling miserable. It's like waking up drunk, kind of. Or Yeah, or waking up like right on the edge of like right as soon as you switch into hungover, mm. like when you're that dehydrated, like miserable yeah, yeah. state. It's like you don't want to be awake at that point, right. but you don't sleep well. Right. Like normally drunk people don't sleep really well. Like you if you pass out. Okay, but that's not really deep sleep, you know? Yeah. And then you wake up feeling miserable. Yeah. So. Or you wake up still drunk. Yeah. Well, okay. That's a, that's never happened to me. I don't think. I don't it's think I've. Absolutely happened to me before. I've heard it's of weird. it. I've heard of it, but I don't think that's ever happened. Like, okay, so I've woken up the same night and, mm-hmm. like, gone to pee or whatever and come back and gone back to sleep. But I've never woken up and, like, needed to go do something having still been drunk. That's one, never one happened One time at the lake it happened. So oh, see, that makes happening. sense to me. But, you know, like we go to bed at a reasonable hour and get up early to mm-hmm. go like tube or whatever. Yeah. And I don't think we were doing anything that day, thankfully, but a couple of us had happened to. Or just like, because we went so late in the night and then slept really, really short. Yeah. We did sleep. Yeah. But then by the time we got up, we were still like, is this still my system? Yeah. It's a weird feeling. Yeah. That, that wouldn't be, because like my whole thing when I would go to sleep would be to be done with that. It's right, like, yeah. like, that's my reset button. Yeah. Like that, that's, I'm resetting the system right now. Right. And so to wake up and have that not be reset or like at, at that point, you would at least want the, the hangover because being awake for the hangover is the worst Right. is to day drink and then slowly slide into the hangover is the worst feeling. Anyway, <laughs> mm-hmm. so there are some ways that caffeine can help that help like Caffeine is in a lot of medication. There's caffeine in uh, some skin ointments that are good for, like, redness. Um, there are actually even caffeine inhalants that you can have, which, are, which are really weird. Um, and the I think the – it might not be the FDA, but I know that there's been, like – People who've reached out and to companies that have made caffeine inhalants and said, like, hey, this is unhealthy. Please stop doing this. <laughs> like, please don't do this to people. Um, and then, of course, you know, you have your caffeinated um, alcoholic beverages, mm. which, like, Four loco is the first thing that comes to mind. And then they cut <laughs> they cut that out. Remember like that? Super caffeinated. Yeah. So, yeah. Then they cut that out. Um, so caffeine can be used in medical procedures and treatments. So right, Four loco just always makes me laugh. It's, it's so stupid. It's, it's the such most a, bizarre thing. It's such I, a stupid thing. I tried it once. I tried it once. It tastes like medicine. It's it was, awful. It was it so like gross. Battery acid. Mm-hmm. It's so bad. The one I got was watermelon, and I had it here, and I drank it during one of the podcast oh, episodes. Yeah, it was here, and it was disgusting. Oh, I tried that one too, so I, it was I tried either it was either watermelon or blue or something like it was. It was. I just remember it being <laughs> like a, blue. <laughs> no. I just remember it being like well, it's probably just called like blue blue bomb or something because it's like, yeah, like it was a neon color. Is all I remember, and I remember looking yeah, at like it. A Nuka Cola. Yeah, I remember looking at it and thinking this isn't going to be good for me <laughs> on any level. Right, nothing There's nothing blow. natural in this, yeah. and I know I'm aware of that, and I'm still gonna put it like into my stomach and let it. And here goes nothing. I knew some people in college who were like. Oh yeah, it's the weekend. Time to go get like three, four locos. Like, y'all didn't, didn't, you. didn't people die because of those? Oh, I don't know. Maybe they like, got uh, super sick. At least like people Probably. thinking they can just slam those because the weird thing about them is like caffeine. So when you have a caffeinated beverage and when you have an alcoholic beverage, the caffeine overshadows how drunk you actually are mm. because it shuts off the part of your brain that's like, okay, we might want to slow down because it, oh. it's like, we might want to slow down. We think we're getting drunk. No drunken lethargy. It doesn't make you tired. Right. So because you're not getting tired. That's interesting. Your brain is like, oh, we must be fine. Let's keep going. And then you end up way too drunk, way too fast. Right. Um, so the moral of the story is don't do Jaeger bombs. Yeah. Ugh. Which, by the way, just gross. Don't do them anyway. Just don't do them anyway because they're disgusting. Just do them all the time. They're disgusting. So gross. They they smell like medicine. Like they, licorice. Oh yeah. Ugh. That's what it is. I can't. Ugh. Yeah. Jaeger smells just like black licorice. It's disgusting. I can't stand it. Um. So caffeine can be used in medical procedures and treatments. So it's used in. This is. Gonna, I'm going to try to say this. Bronchopulmonary dysplasia. That's um, breathing and heart something. Uh-huh. And premature infants for prevention and treatment. So it may improve weight gain during therapy and reduce the uh, incidence of ce- uh, cerebral palsy as well as reduce language and cognitive delay. On the other hand, subtle long-term side effects are possible. So what that is is a chronic lung disease in which premature infants, usually those that are treated with supplemental oxygen, will require long-term oxygen for mm-hmm. the rest of their lives, essentially. Um so it just means it's like this really horrible lung disease that 
tiny little babs can get. Um, some people use caffeine containing beverages such as coffee or tea to try to treat their asthma. Evidence to support this practice, however, is poor. It's believed that it can improve airway function uh, in people with asthma. So sometimes people think it's possible to help. Uh, caffeine improves muscular strength and power and may enhance muscular endurance. And now, okay, so take this one with a grain of salt, right? Okay. Uh, increased consumption of coffee and caffeine is associated with a decrease with a decreased risk of depression, but it can worsen symptoms of depression if one stops abruptly. So the I so yeah it's a drug yeah so ideally like I guess what the thing is is like it it's an upper. So I think that's where they're getting the whole idea for, like, it helps with depression because sure. it's an upper. But then if you stop taking it, it's not an upper anymore. <laughs> right. And that is inherently inherently a downer um, without meaning to be, um, <laughs> which is terrible. Uh, coffee consumption is associated with a. <laughs> this one's kind of funny. It's not funny, but it's funny in an ironic way. So it's kind um, of funny. <laughs> kind of hashtag kind of funny um, is associated with a lower overall risk of cancer, liver and uh, endometrial specifically, but it may also have a modest effect on colorectal cancer. There does not appear to be a significant protective effect against other types of cancers and heavy coffee consumption actually may increase the risk of bladder cancer. So it's like pick your poison. Yeah. Which kind of cancer would you like? Would you rather have the rectal cancer? Would you rather have the bladder cancer? You drink too much. You got the bladder one. Drink too little. You got the rectal one. Whoops. What do you do there's next door to each other i don't know how it would affect that much <laughs> one of my holes is screwed yeah either what well <laughs> that's a statement that you said <laughs> on the internet.com that one didn't catch for a while <laughs> you, said- <laughs> you were in your next sentence and then it hit you it was weird <laughs> caffeine sometimes increases the effectiveness of some medications such as those for headaches which we talked about yeah um, and they also use it in like ADHD medication, some kind of medications for OCD. Sometimes they use them in medications for like people who've had heart surgery, people who are suffering PTSD. Like there's all kinds of different uses for, um, like medical grade caffeine. They aren't saying go out and drink a Mountain Dew, you'll be fine. Right. They're like, it's a different formula of caffeine sure. that they're using. Um, some of these findings may have something to do with other healthful properties of the coffee bean, but most can be linked to caffeine directly. And researchers are e- even trying to develop drugs for Parkinson's containing caffeine derivatives. So, which is why I thought of Parkinson's earlier. Yeah. Um, so they're they're actually thinking that caffeine could be helpful in some way to trying to find I don't know if they're trying to find a cure, but they're trying to find treatment for sure. Right. Um, more research is uncovering potential benefits from uh, this commonly consumed drug. A study by the Bird Alzheimer's Institute in Tampa, Florida, for instance, showed that lab mice injected with caffeine were protected against developing Alzheimer's disease. The injections even helped reduce symptoms in those that had the disease. The findings led doctors to believe that up to five cups of coffee a day could have the same positive effect on humans. Hey, do you remember earlier when I said there was a certain level of amount of coffee you should have a day or else it starts to get poisonous yeah it was five so do you want alzheimer's or do you not want alzheimer's well, there's like do a whole want- there's a whole thing too with like the study culture yeah where like well remember when coffee was terrible for you and right. the coffee was great for you and dark chocolate was terrible for you and then it was wonderful for you the wine those, eggs everything the problem with those studies is like there's a whole last week tonight bit about it that's why i know about this but like you were always incentivized to publish no matter where you work because that's how you get money in yeah. basically the science field. And because you're incentivized to publish, you want to publish new things. And because you want to publish new things, no one fact checks anybody else. Yeah. So people will do this. I think they, I forget what it's called, like sample hacking or something like that, where they will say like, oh, well, these five mice don't have Alzheimer's. And we, and it's only five mice, like, you know, yeah. whatever of like a yeah. hundred, but they're like, oh, coffee could help Alzheimer's. Right. And then nobody fact and checks it. And so now it's on the news. And yeah. And they're allowed to say that. Right. Like they're allowed to say it could do this. Right. Because we don't have scientific evidence to back it up. And no one fact I, checks it because there's no money in it. I could grow wings and fly. Like it's not right. going to happen, but I could. Yeah. Like, and I, by, by all means, like you're able to walk around and say stuff like that. If, as long as you have some kind of scientific backing. Right. Like, which is dangerous. It's incredibly dangerous because like, what if you're one of the people that's like, all right, I'm going to drink 15 cups of coffee a day then to try to help, you know, my right. colorectal cancer options. And then like, boom, now you got bladder cancer because you drink all the coffee in the world. And also you're probably dead because don't drink that much coffee. Yeah. Like those, those things on Facebook and like, like local news loves running stories. on. Yeah. Them. Like 
they're so misled. Like that, I won't go on a whole thing. Sorry, I didn't mean to like hijack this. But it's <laughs> no, just really I know what you're talking about. This. What's under your kitchen sink that can kill you? News at eleven. Right. It's like, well, tell tell me now. What yeah. if it's in my kitchen right now, trying to kill me? Like, right. how would I know? And that's like, it's this guy named Bates. Studies say that Drano could kill you if ingested. Like, right. what? Well, yeah. Anything that says like studies, new studies, fine. Yeah. Just take take yeah. it with a grain of salt. Yeah. Be aware that like. It's not a scientific paper. It is not a peer-reviewed scientific paper that has been tested and researched and called back. And that's an important part to recognize here, too, is, like, we are not doctors. Like, I am not qualified whatsoever to tell you that it would be a good idea to go out and drink five cups of coffee in a day to clear up any issues you might have with your health. You are going to do whatever you want to do and consult a doctor before you make any rash decisions on this stuff. Like, right. I am by no means qualified to tell you any of this stuff. I'm going to continue drinking my one, two cups of coffee a day. You do whatever you like. <laughs> and then we'll just meet in the middle. And whoever ends up with cancer ends up with cancer. Everything's trying to kill us anyways. Um, <laughs> the views of Lydia do not reflect the views of the Lord. <laughs> retweets. <laughs> retweets are not, not endorsements. endorsements. <laughs> um, so we talked about how caffeine works. We talked about how it helps you. And now we're going to talk about how it hurts you. Great. So we already know. Just by being people who take caffeine or like enjoy caffeine in some kind of level. Ingest it. Yeah, ingest caffeine that you can like get the shakes and you can get irritable if you don't have it. You can get headaches. Like I will get a headache if I haven't had caffeine. Like. Oh, really? Yeah. Like it it happened to me this weekend when I went home. I saw my mom and woke up and hadn't had caffeine. And I was like, I my head's killing me. Mm -hmm. Like it hurts. So caffeine can increase blood pressure and cause vasoconstriction which is narrowing of the blood vessels. Um, Coffee and caffeine can affect gastrointestinal motility. Motility? What does motility mean? It's just like the use of your your guts. Got it. They just can't say that. Um, and gastric acid secretion. <laughs> can affect the use of your gut. The, your gut usage. Um, People in, think the show. <laughs> in postmenopausal women, high caffeine consumption can accelerate bone loss. Uh, bone loss. Bone loss. So you know how, uh, what is it called when women lose bone density? Um, oh. And they all... Oh, like they're not just losing them, Dorm. Is that what you thought? They're well, just breaking them. Bone loss. Do you think like, they're just losing them? I was like, what happens? They just lose <laughs> they, a pinky one day. Think like, they, think they just dissolve? Okay, well, bone. Like, all right, that makes a little more sense. Okay, thinning of bones. Thin Maybe bo- not bone loss. It's bo- not, not. It's not, not hair I'm not loss. You. It's not hair loss. You're right. It's <laughs> I'm poor, addressing the medical it's, community. It's poorly, that calls it bone loss. Poorly worded in the sense that like. You wouldn't just wake up and all of a sudden you don't have a leg. Where'd it go? Right. Or I've like, lost it. The worst thing is actually not like the, an end of you that would go away. Yeah. Just like one, like. <laughs> like, oh, like a rib is gone and you just like, or like one of your spine, like one of the bones in your spine goes and all of a sudden you're just sideways. Like and you your don't, femur is gone. Oh, yeah. So you but the rest have, of your legs yeah, there. Yeah, the rest of your legs oh, there. So you just oh, have this dangling Oh, leg. I hate it. Oh, I hate it. Post knee foot. I I hate that I'm thinking it. I hate that I'm thinking it. I hate hate that you made me visualize it. You have to like drag it. Oh, you gotta swing it. Or no, actually, no, you would, (laughs) theoretically, if you just lost your femur and not the muscles and stuff. Yeah. It would just, you would just like, <laughs> I think this would be right. You would just you be still, squish from your hip yeah. to your knee. Yeah. So you, you wouldn't just be, be dragging it around. You would just be shorter on this side. Would you? I think so. Would it, do you think it would constrict if you didn't have the bone there for it to hold on to? Like would the muscle constrict? Because the muscle is hanging on to the bone. Right, but I'm saying it would just be like a pile of thigh. Yeah. From your hip to your yeah, knee. Yeah, that, instead yeah. Of like a long. Oh, yeah, thigh. no, I'm agreeing with you. So, so the, it would be the, stacked. Yeah, the muscle would just constrict back up so into the leg. you would just be shorter on, your, on the side you yeah. lost your femur. Oh, that's upsetting. I don't like it. I don't care for that at all. Um, minor undesired symptoms from caffeine ingestion, not sufficiently severe to warrant a psychiatric diagnosis, are common and include mild anxiety, jitter- jitteriness, insomnia, increased sleep latency, and reduced coordination. So that's a weird thing, too, because it's like, okay, it talked about earlier that what is, you made a face. Uh, I talked earlier that caffeine can help your coordination. Now caffeine could also be, like possibly hurt your coordination. So what? Mm. what is it, scientists? Yeah. What's the truth? Um, caffeine can have a negative effects on anxiety disorders, which is a big surprise. Um, for some people, discontinuing caffeine use can significantly reduce anxiety. So if you're considering trying to get rid of your anxiety, maybe think about cutting out some caffeine. Mm. Uh, again, I'm not a doctor. Don't listen to me. Um, <laughs> consumption of 1 to 1.5 grams, which is 1,000 to 1500 milligrams per day is associated with a condition known as caffeinism all right 
Never heard of this before in my life. Caffeinism usually combines caffeine dependency with a wide range of unpleasant symptoms, including nervousness, irritability, restlessness, insomnia, headaches, palpitations of the heart after caffeine use. Little is known about the prevalence of caffeinism. It sounds like a it sounds like a religion um, in the general population. Far Cry Six, where you take that caffeine. <laughs> Although most people are familiar with the disorder, no, um, it probably re- <laughs> it probably remains underdiagnosed because one, it's not real, and two, patients are rarely questioned about the use of caffeine, which is true like if you go to a doctor they say how much do you drink how much do you smoke right they don't say like how many, how, how many pops do you drink how much fast food do you have like they don't normally say stuff like that they right. normally ask you the stuff that can kill you but so can caffeine symptoms associated with high doses <laughs> there was really funny shame that would be best <laughs> high doses of caffeine include muscle twitching okay so there's some really good words in here that i want you to hear right. this is the whole reason that i put this in here because these words are very good okay muscle twitching rambling flow of thought and speech tachycardia and cardiac arrhythmia periods of inexhaustibility Nice. And psychomotor agitation. Hell yeah. And anorexia. Oh. Yeah, not so great. Psychomotor agitation. Psychomotor agitation and inexhaustibility. That's pretty great. What would you want your superhero power to be? (laughs) Inexhaustibility. I literally don't ever want to be exhausted. (laughs) Can can I have that power? Just my life. I never get tired, ever. Can I have that, please? According to an article by the BBC, the American Academy of Pediatrics has warned against children and teenagers consuming energy drinks, saying their ingredients have been tested, have not been tested on children and, quote, no one can ensure they are safe. Great. Yeah. Go tell 13 year old dorm drinking super a, cool? a rock star energy drink. <laughs> Feeling super cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Like I already had the most energy. Though. Like that's the most energy I was ever going to have. Yeah. As a kid, and I was like, I need more. I have to have it. I've got, got to play have Guitar it. Hero for three more hours. I've got to have this energy. Well, but probably had uh, it was probably Guitar Hero branded because <laughs> they target. They probably got some special code. But or that's marketing, right? Like, yeah. look at the look at who they're targeting. Like, right. they've got Call of Duty and stuff yeah. like that. For I remember when um, Mountain Dew did the red and blue versions for World of Warcraft. Like, mm. they had like special codes that you can get a little pet in the game if you bought them. And uh, yeah, I bought them. Right. Um. Like it worked on me. Like it worked on a bunch <laughs> of other. Kids. Do like brand themselves as gamer fuel at one point. So they have gamer fuel now. Okay. Yeah, which is these ridiculous cans, and I had one on a twelve-hour stream, and I opened it, and it hissed, and I screamed because it was like, like diffusing a bomb. It was the worst sounding thing <laughs> I've ever it. heard. It was so loud because it was like pressurized, like a freaking airplane cabin. <laughs> like you went to open it, and it was like. <laughs> Like, it was awful. I hated it. It's all that gamer fuel. And it was so much gamer fuel that, I like, how do you control that amount of gamer fuel in one can? I don't understand it. But... 24-hour stream with an IV of gamer fuel. Just put gamer directly. <laughs> just <laughs> hook me up directly and you'd be dead in 15 seconds. That's true. Like, it's miserable and it tasted mm. like vitamins again they always taste like vitamins i don't know mm. what the deal is but they always taste disgusting um in 2017 a coroner ruled that a healthy 16 year old from south carolina died from drinking too many highly caffeinated drinks too quickly so not just that it was too many it's of like them shotgunning energy drinks basically yeah Ugh. so this part is directly from the bbc davis allen cripe collapsed at his high school after drinking a mcdonald's latte a large mountain dew soft drink and an energy drink in just under two hours if you think about it that's really not that that's fast. not that fast I right think I say like three energy drinks in like 15 minutes right when i read this i was like that sounds like me in college <laughs> like that <laughs> yeah, sounds like, like me right now school. like i would do that right now like that's terrifying and this kid was otherwise healthy they said he was 200 pounds but that that didn't affect it like right. like they wouldn't have known his cause of death was this if he hadn't been surrounded by his friends and he was drinking an energy drink at the time he collapsed mm-hmm. they were like what happened and they're like oh, i don't know he was drinking this energy drink and he collapsed and they were like that must have something to do with it and that's the only way they knew like because he, he, he had a heart attack like he oh. his heart just stopped and that's the only way that they knew what it was is because of that um, so he died from a caffeine-induced cardiac event causing a probable arrhythmia. A probable arrhythmia. Mm. They're not even really sure what happened. They just know his heart stopped pumping because it was like, listen, kid, that's enough. We're done. And his brain was probably like, I would like to sleep. <laughs> and he was like, no, nah, we're good. And then he died. Um, he had no pre-existing heart condition. And a quote from the coroner reads thusly. 
We're not saying that it was the total amount of caffeine in the system. It was just the way that it was ingested over that short period of time. And the chugging of the energy drink at the end was the issue that uh, was what the issue was with the cardiac arrhythmia. So the um, so he must have just slammed it. Yeah. He must have just slammed the last energy drink and that did it. Probably trying to get to his next class. Right. Probably like rush, like probably couldn't drink it in class. Probably just rushed to the next class and just chugged it and then collapsed. Yeah. Which, when I read it, I was like, that's it? Like, right. he had a... Mc- energy yeah, like, he probably got the, the McDonald's, like, latte and the Mountain Dew at the same place. Yeah. And then had an energy drinker, got it from the from the school. Right. And now... And, like, when you're in high school, like, you're invincible, right? Like, nothing, right. nothing can kill you. Yeah, yeah. So, like, why would you think that that would hurt you? That's so weird to me. Yeah, it's bizarre. And... Caffeine's a stimulant. So, like, all of that's coursing through his body and he's already, like, young and, like, trying to run around everywhere he goes, probably. And so, like, it just didn't help and his little heart just gave out. Oh. Um, so, caffeine acts on the body's central nervous system within minutes, increasing alertness and reducing sleepiness. But it has other effects, too. So, like we said, it can raise your heart rate, can make you feel anxious or jittery. And once you drunk it, it takes hours to clear it from your system. So having a few cups of coffee or other caffeinated drinks a day is pretty safe, but drinking too much or lots in a short space of time is pretty risky. And obviously, you can overdose on it, as we talked about. So adolescents and pregnant women are advised to have less than the normal amount of caffeine that people have in a day. Caffeinated drinks are unsuitable for toddlers and young children in general. Like, they're not supposed to have it. They got enough energy as it is. They'll be fine. Yeah, and the reason that I brought this up is because... When I was growing up, I lived next door to this family and they had this young boy who was maybe like four who every morning would drink a Coke. Like his mom would give him a Coke in a sippy cup every morning. (laughs) And by the time he was five, he had to have most of his teeth removed because they were literally rotting out of his head. So his teeth were like covered in like little metal plates and stuff where they were trying to save the last of his teeth they could. But otherwise they were just removing them because they were baby teeth anyway because he was like five years old. But... They were rotting out of his head. That's so gross. Yeah, it was terrible. So if, like, from the 10 to 12 age range, you want to have, like, the amount of caffeine that's in, like, a half a cup of coffee. And that's mm-hmm. it. Like, that's all that you're supposed to have at that age. But I did read that there was no evidence to support the theory that, like, drinking coffee stunts your growth. Huh. Like, you know, you always hear that. Like, yeah, don't yeah, don't yeah. don't drink or smoke when you're a kid. It'll stunt your growth. They, there was no evidence to back that up. Um. So... You may want to cut back on caffeine if you experience side effects such as headache, insomnia, nervousness, irritability, restlessness, stomach upset, fast heartbeat, and muscle tremors, a.k.a. life. (laughs) If you have any of these, you might want to not have caffeine, the one joy I have in life left. You get very defensive very quickly. (laughs) The one joy that I have in life, sir, Mr. Internet, who's telling me that I can't have caffeine anymore. Uh, (laughs) So if you... Think that you should be limiting yourself on caffeine, which I guess most people should, <laughs> but whatever. Um, if you're pregnant, you shouldn't have as much caffeine because caffeine passes through the placenta to your baby. If you're breastfeeding, since a small amount of caffeine that you consume is passed along to your baby as well. Um, if you have sleep disorders, including insomnia, if you have migraines or chronic headaches, have anxiety, GERD or ulcers, fast or irregular heart rhythms, high blood pressure... Uh, If you take certain medicines or supplements, including other stimulants, certain antibiotics, asthma medicines, heart medicines, and you always want to check with your health health, words, check. Do you always want to tell? Oh, my God. You You always always want to. to, You always want to check with your health care provider. See, I couldn't even get part of it out. Um, Whether there might be interactions between caffeine and any medicines or supplements you take. A lot of people don't think about that, but like Mm -hmm. a lot of medicines that you're taking can be negatively affected by caffeine because you could be putting way too much of it into your body um and if you're a child or a teen you shouldn't have as much caffeine as adults do you don't need it yeah so if you there are ways to like if you want to like cut back on your caffeine there are ways to do that you can find them online um some people tell you to go decaf i'm not gonna put that evil on you ricky bobby um but like don't just cut it out like cold turkey is really hard for your body with anything pretty much like you want to kind of be gradual with it um and you if you are like concerned with being quote unquote addicted to it or something it's really bad to just like drop it 
Mm-hmm. You don't want to just, you don't want to do that. You kind of want to be gentle with yourself about it. Um, so if you're like most adults, caffeine's probably part of your daily routine. And most often it doesn't pose a health problem. But be mindful of those situations just in case you might think you might want to change up your coffee habit a little bit. And I'll leave you with a fun little fact. Okay. Um, that kind of doesn't start out fun, but it is fun. Caffeine can be toxic to birds and good. Um, and to dogs <laughs> and cats. <laughs> and yeah, just ends. And to dogs and cats, which is sad. Um, and has a pronounced adverse effect on mollusks, various insects, what? yeah, and spiders. This is at least partly due to a poor ability to metabol- uh, to metabolize uh, the compound, causing higher levels for a given dose per unit weight. So they can't. They can't metabolize it. That's the fun fact. Well, uh, caffeine has also been found to enhance the reward memory of honeybees. Oh, yeah. See, that's fun. That fun. I ended on a positive Anything thing. Anything that's good for the bees. See, honeybees are good. I'm just like, okay, spiders can't process it? <laughs> that's like, your fun you're fact? You're like, okay, so spiders can't wake up in the morning? What's your point? <laughs> that's the idea of well, fun? Well, the reason that it made me think that it's something funny is because in the Garfield car- uh, cartoons and the comics. Where I base all of my humor. Yeah, where I base all of my knowledge about uh, animal life. Uh-huh. Um because all cats like lasagna, there's always a little spider and sometimes it's got a little newspaper and it's got a little cup of coffee and it like walks in and it, dude, they can't metabolize that. It must be decaf. <laughs> <laughs> you were very amused by that story. <laughs> one time one of them came up and it was going to try to sell him. <laughs> going down this path, all right. One time it came up and it was going to try to sell him uh, Girl Scout cookies and it had a little Girl Scout hat on and Garfield killed it with a newspaper and his little hat was still there after he killed it. Oh my god! I know. Committed murder. Yeah, basically. Does he the kills spider. Come back? No, he kills spiders all the time. He so hates... they're all different spiders. I guess so. Yeah, they all look the same. They're all just a little. That's racist. They're just <laughs> they're just a little circle with legs coming off the sides of them. They don't have like distinguishing features or anything. Mm, not one with like a beard. No, or if it did, it would probably just be a disguise. Ah, uh, <laughs> those rapscallions. <laughs> just a little hat, a little monocle. Anyway, dorm working people. It's a weird turn. Uh, <laughs> Twitch.tv slash dorm stream. Where can people find you? Twitch.tv slash team. We also have merch. And a YouTube. And Discord. And a Twitter. Snapchat. Instagrams. That's all I got. Patreon. Oh, yeah, that one too. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's all we got. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I learned about spiders dying. Yeah, you learned about how spiders can't uh, metabolize. Or sell Girl Scout cookies effectively. Yeah, caffeine. Or they can't sell Girl Scout cookies effectively. Um, and you learn that you could possibly get addicted to caffeine if you're not careful. Which is fine, because I don't drink that much caffeine. I feel like I do. I feel like I probably drink a lot of it. Because <laughs> You make up our, both of our shares. Well, the can, way you're saying can, that, I was like, I drink enough for the both Well, can I just tell you? Because, sure. all right, so I have this diet Dr. Pepper Cherry sitting in front of me right now. Yeah. And then I had an energy drink today, and then I had a cup of coffee today. Okay. And so when I did research on this today, I was like, thank God I didn't drink all this within the same two-hour period. Because <laughs> I, I didn't chug the energy drink. Because God. God knows I'm in worse shape than that 16-year-old boy would have been. And I just would have been dead on the ground and nobody would have known. Known. Yeah, like nobody it. nobody would have known it. Yeah, I have not had any caffeine today. Ugh. Most of my days I don't. Ugh, that um, makes me so mad. Like I did during the 12 hour. But. Well, yeah, that makes sense to me. Or like if it's, like I'll drink coffee when it's cold, like outside. Oh, that's a hot chocolate time. Oh, see, but that's the only time I really like. I love coffee during the winter, but like I can't drink coffee during the summer. Oh, okay. I don't want hot and hot. I don't know. I don't yeah, like no, that it. totally like makes sense. Soup in the summer. Nobody does that. Oh, eat soup when it gets cold. Oh, people don't eat soup in the summer. I don't. Oh, <laughs> then you just know. you just count for everybody. Yeah, <laughs> people being me. <laughs> the people. I am everyday the, people. Yeah, so dorm so. versus the people. Yeah. Well, don't compare me to Larry Flint there. Oh well. Flint, Flint. What was his name? Flint. Flynn? Yeah, sorry. Flint? I do that every time. I really don't know. Was he like the penthouse guy? Hustler? That was it. Hustler. He was gross. He was a gross He's guy. He's a gross yeah. dude. He's a, like, a movie about him. Sleazy, sleazy little gross man. I don't know what that movie's about. I just thought it was a court gross. case. Is he still alive? He did. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> what was that noise? I really didn't know. <laughs> uh, I was going to wager one guess or the other. I have no idea. Uh, I bet he's dead. You think he's dead? Yeah. How old do you think he would have been at his death? Oh, at his death? Not now? Yeah. Well... Uh. Well, I mean, like, okay, how old was he when he died, if he's dead? Uh, he's probably, like, 67. Larry Flint is still alive. Damn it. How old is he? Like, 80? Uh, let's see. I was gonna guess he died, like, 10 years ago, so. He was born in Kentucky. Oh, great. One of our own. (laughs) Whoa. That's weird. He's 76. Trombones. 
He's so, have you seen what he looks like? He yeah. looks like a raisin. Yeah, he looks like a. He's always looked like a raisin. He's a crumpled old gross man. Yeah, that's he right. looks like a. He looks like one of the California raisins. <laughs> Not where you know I'm what I'm talking about. You know. He looks like he's, um, he's gross looking. Oh, what is? Oh, what is that actor's he name? He was born in Kentucky. That's weird. Ugh, I won't remember it. Never mind. <laughs> I won't remember it. Never mind. It's a weird end. Yeah, it's, we always do something like this online. Yeah, that's true. Mine always go weird. Anyway. Until next time. Be careful where you click.